Hello and welcome to Vladis Place. I recently went on a sailing trip to Turkey with a group of friends. At some point, they stopped at a local coffee shop to have a, a cup of coffee. I happened not to be there with them, but they came back to tell me that this was the best cup of coffee they ever had, and everybody agreed on it. I'm a big fan of a good cup of coffee, and I was really sad that I missed the opportunity to try this unique coffee. After a couple of days of bragging about this amazing coffee with hazelnut and pistachios, we decided to turn around and go to revisit this coffee shop. It's very interesting what you're willing to do and how excited you can get over a little things if that's something that you truly like. And I happen to like a good cup of coffee. Things can get only better if in pursuit of a good cup of coffee, you can include sailing. Because sailing is something that I'm so passionate about. This is my idea of a perfect vacation. pursuit of a hidden treasure. This was so much fun. Finally, we were there and once we arrived, I wanted to find out if they will allow me to film how this special coffee was made. So right from the beginning, it was obvious that there is a whole ceremony that precedes the coffee making. Everything about it was special, from these wooden trays to miniature cups and dishes to these itty bitty cookies. They were taking their time to present the coffee properly. So when you come to Turkey, uh, one thing that is inevitable is that you're gonna have a, a Turkish coffee. So my friends had a cup of coffee in this place with Anne. I was not there and so we sailed away the next day and the whole time we were sailing we were talking about how wonderful this coffee was that we decided to come back for me to try this particular cup of coffee. Apparently this coffee is made with the roasted and grinded almonds, pistachios and coffee and that's what makes this coffee so good. So Anne here Anne. is Anne, Anne is making coffee for us and she's presenting it in such a way that I think even if she poured a bad cup of coffee, mm -hmm. the coffee would taste good because she's got the cookie, she's got the water, she's got all the whole thing prepared for the enjoyment. You don't drink coffee quickly in Turkey. This is a whole ceremony. Nice. So thank you, Anne. Thank you. And I'm gonna thank try you. for myself and see if it's really that thank good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And finally, it was time to give it a try. And my, 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 was this coffee good. And now I understood why my friends were bragging about it so much. So I tried to absorb the memory of the flavor and the texture so that when I go back home, I can recreate the same cup of coffee. Like all good Turks, we made sure to sit and enjoy that cup of coffee. In fact, we stayed so long that Ona decided to serve us some of her homemade ravioli. This is a typical Turkish ravioli dish. And now, since we had a coffee and dinner, all that was left to do is to get a dessert. So, on our way back to boat, we stopped by the local sweet shop where they sell all kinds of baklava. After taking just a bite of this baklava, you instantly become an addict. And so sure enough, we, we left the store with a box full of variety of different baklavas for tomorrow morning. This was a beautiful day and a night to remember, not just for the coffee, but for the company and the experience of spending time in a different town, emerging ourselves in a different food, flavors and culture. After departing from Turkey and Istanbul, I was on my way to Serbia, to Belgrade, and to my hometown in Republic of Srpska. 
the whole time I was traveling on the back of my mind, I was trying to figure out how to recreate that special cup of coffee. So as soon as I landed to my hometown, I headed towards Farmer's Market, where I knew was a small coffee shop that daily roasted and grinded fresh coffee. And I was in luck. Owner of this small coffee shop does it all. She roasts, grinds, and serves customers too. It was so nice to see the shops like these are still surviving despite the big chains. So this is a little a shop right in my town and this is where people come to get fresh coffee. Mm -hmm. She's checking if the coffee is roasted, so it's just about getting there. The small market smells phenomenal and I'm gonna wait for the next batch. So finally coffee came out and for some reason I felt like a kid in a candy shop. I was genuinely happy. Just the sight of this made my day. I like coffee a lot, but what I love even more is the fact that small businesses like these are still surviving. High quality and a personal relationship with your customers matters a lot in this town. Small shops like these are vital and key to health of any society. They not only deliver a better product, but overall they create a better community. I was so impressed by this hardworking shop owner and taken by the fragrance of freshly roasted coffee that I bought six kilos of this fresh grind. With all the fruits and vegetables I bought at the farmer's market, this was the max that I could carry. Otherwise, I would have bought even more. I live half a world away from this little shop, so I wanted to make sure I was well stocked before I returned to Los Angeles. Traveling is one of the most wonderful things in the world, but coming home to Los Angeles and my little town of Temecula was simply good. And now that I'm home, I had a coffee to brew. This is definitely an experiment, so I'm gonna try to figure out the secret of their hazelnut and pistachio creamy coffee. So I roasted hazelnut last night, and this morning I'm just uh, peeling the auto shell. And the key to roasting hazelnut is to uh, roast it to the point where you awake the flavor of hazelnut without burning it. And also you wanna make sure that you have the uh, well dried nut. So this way it will blend better in a coffee. So anyway, um, I peel the outer shell because that will add bitterness to our coffee. So you wanna avoid that. In addition to that, I also have some uh, roasted pistachios. These are unsalted pistachios and I did my best to peel the outer shell from these as well. Uh, although this was a little bit harder. And also I have some creamer because that coffee we had and turkey definitely had some kind of cream in it. So a little bit of sugar, creamer, pistachios, and hazelnut. So I'll just go ahead and blend all of this and use it as an addition to a coffee. But most importantly, we have this freshly uh, roasted and ground coffee. This is what's gonna make all the difference. I'm so curious to what will um, become of this and how this coffee will turn out. Because as I said, um, I have no idea uh, how they did this, but I'm just going by the taste. And perhaps I have too much of one or the other, but okay, a little bit more sugar. So I'm just gonna try to blend this. Uh, while having that coffee, we were definitely able to taste bits and pieces of nuts. And it was kind of nice, you, were, you could nibble on the nuts while you were having your coffee. So let's try to blend this and see what happens. This actually looks really good. I was concerned that um, because of the nuts and if the nuts was not dry enough that this might just create a paste, but it didn't. So that's a good news. I can't tell you how good this smells just as it is. Just the a smell of hazelnut and pistachios together. I mean, this alone could be a dessert in itself. Yum. The 
Okay, now we, uh, we're gonna start making our coffee and uh, somehow I found this dish in my house already. Although I have seen many of these in Turkey, I knew that I had a dish like this in my house and uh, after my return from Turkey, I truly appreciate it now because I have seen men uh, in making these and I now understand how much time it takes to make a dish like this. So from now on, I'll be making my Turkish coffee in an original Turkish dish. I actually can't resist, I gotta try this. I mean, how bad can it be, cream, sugar, and nuts? <laughs> Very good. You can just eat it like this. Okay, so um, we're gonna start with the high fire. And I have done a coffee video a while back explaining how to make Turkish coffee, or at least how my mom used to make it. So what we're doing here, warm, we're warming up the water, but we don't wanna allow water to boil all the way through. And I will explain shortly why. Okay, um, so you can hear the sound. This is where water is just about to boil. And that's where we want it, just a little bit more. When you see the first bubbles come from the bottom, that is the um, sign that the coffee's ready. So um, as I explained in my earlier, video there's got to be some kind of science in a, in a molecule alignment uh, when the water gets certain temperature that makes coffee taste better so for whatever reason i'll just remember that my mom was very uh, particular about that saying you know don't wait till water boils because the coffee won't be good okay the first bubbles turn the fire off move the coffee off the fire Oh, this coffee smells so good. I'm gonna make it strong. Then I'm gonna add a teaspoon, teaspoon of this. Okay, mix it gently, because when you mix it gently, you're gonna create this cream, or my mom used to call it kaimak, and that's what you want. That's a sign the coffee's good. So obviously, if you uh, like this recipe and if you like to add more hazelnut mixture, uh, go ahead. I don't want to ruin the coffee flavor, so I just added a teaspoon. And after trying this one, I'm going to see if perhaps next time we can do it. So let's go outside and enjoy this cup of coffee properly. It's Saturday morning and the timing could not be more appropriate for a good cup of coffee. We're gonna make our own coffee and breakfast ceremony. Alright, first is the And here we go. The coffee definitely smells good and I have no doubt that it will taste just as good. It's time to relax and to enjoy our Saturday breakfast. And this morning I'm serving a homemade marmalade which is just finished last night. And for those of you who are not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, consider subscribing because that's the next recipe. Also, for those of you who are with us for the first time, you can find out more about me and my charitable work at vladavi.com. Okay, and now the final verdict. Let's see if this tastes like that cup of coffee in Turkey. Mm, very good. Very, very good. Making coffee like this definitely takes a little extra effort and time. But uh, the point of doing this is to savor the moment and enjoy the things that you really like. I happen to like a co good cup of coffee. And um, in addition to this, this was a, um, having coffee in Turkey was a very valuable lesson to me because I observed uh, how people take time and uh, stop in their daily routine just to savor the moment and to socialize. That, above all, was probably the most important lesson. Uh, you could see people sitting in front of their shops, in the, front, in the middle of the town, just uh, conversing and having a cup of coffee. 
uh, you don't see people holding a cup in Turkey and running around the town. So that was kind of nice and um, I hope we can learn something from them. My name is Vlada Vladik. Thank you so much for watching and for spending time with me. Until the next time and the next video, please take good care of yourself and those around you.